Today's lesson is on slope and rate of change. What is slope? Slope is a number that describes both the direction and steepness of a line. In other words, the rate of change of that line. There are four different types of slope. Positive slope, which trends upward. Negative slope, which trends downward. Zero slope, which is another word for a horizontal line, and undefined slope, which is a vertical line. You can find slope in three ways, which we'll cover now, from a graph, from a table, or from two points, and all have their merits, so you should be comfortable with doing it in any of these three ways. To find the slope from a graph, you first want to pick two ordered pairs that lie on the line. Next, you'll connect the two points by making a right triangle. The hypotenuse is the line. The rise, or the vertical change, over the run, or the horizontal change, is your slope. We'll practice that on the next page. To find the slope from a table, you're going to identify the constant rate of change in the domain, or your x values, and the range, the y values. Remember, though, to write your slope as the change in y over the change in x or rise over run. I'm going to take a second and point out a common mistake. Most tables are either written like x, y, and then you have your values here and here, or x, y, this direction, and you have your values here and here. This makes sense because we always do domain, which is x, then range, domain, range. However, Slope is the vertical change, the change in y, over the change in x. So the most common mistake is to write it x over y, or x over y. You need to be very careful that you do change in y over change in x. All right, last, find the slope from two points. You're going to label your two ordered pairs as x1, y1, and x2, y2. You'll then substitute the numbers into the formula and simplify. Now one thing I want to point out with the formula, this is just the change in y and the change in x, like we did every single time. Uh, we typically write the formula y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1, but you're labeling the ordered pairs x1, y1, x2, y2. So it does not matter which ordered pair you label as 1 and 2. However, you need to be consistent and make sure you're subtracting y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1. A common mistake on this is to do y2 minus y1 and then x1 minus x2. As long as you're doing the same ordered pair first and second, you will still get the same answer even if the person next to you labeled their ordered pairs in the opposite way you did. So I think this will make more sense when we practice. So let's go to the next page. To connect this back to rate of change, Remember that a rate of change is a ratio between a change in one variable over a specific amount of time. In real world situations, we might use units like dollars per hour, but it's just another word for slope because if we graph all of these, then you will see that the change in y over change in x, x is your time variable. So in other words, rate of change is slope. Now let's use the three methods that we just discussed to do the practice. In our first problem, we're going to find the slope of a line that passes between negative 5, 8, and 2, 4. So first, I'm going to label x1, y1, and x2, y2. Now we're going to write the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, so I'm going to do y2, which is 4, minus y1, which is 8, 4 minus 8, over x2, which is 2, minus negative 5. So 4 minus 8 is negative 4, and 2 minus negative 5, that's 2 plus 5, is 7. So my slope is negative 4 over 7. Now just to show you that if I had labeled it, the other way around, I still would have gotten that same answer if instead I do 8 minus 4 over negative 5 minus 2, 
Now I get 8 minus 4 is 4, negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7. And we know that negative 4 over 7 and 4 over negative 7 will give us the same line, same rate of change, same slope. All right, so the next one on a graph, I really want to zoom in here because picking the two points is probably the thing that students struggle with the most. So when you find your points, you want to make sure that you don't pick the, like a point right here. That's not in the crosshairs, okay? What we want, when I say crosshairs, I mean like really in the corner of a line. So we want to pick a point that's really in the corner. Now, because we're going to use this later, I would highly suggest that if you can find a point on the y-axis, you make that one of your points. So I'm going to put that right there. And I can see that's really at the 3. And then you can go up or down. It doesn't matter from that line. And every time you get to line, see that one's not in the crosshairs. It's not on that corner. And this one looks to be good here. I'm going to put a point right there. Now this is a good time to point out that if I wrote these ordered pairs down, I could use the same method I just did. It's always important to know that you have more than one way to do it. Um, and also I could go back the other direction and I could put a point here. Okay, As long as you're consistent, there's more than one way to approach this problem, but everyone should still get the same answer in the end. So recall that we want the rise or the vertical change over the run. So if this is our right triangle, I'm going to draw that line very straight, the hypotenuse is the line, so our legs become the rise and the run. So if I go up one, that's positive one, obviously if I went down one it would be negative one, and to the right, positive one, two, three, four, positive four. So that is positive one over positive four, so I have a slope of one fourth. I want to show you if I went from this point to this point, if I go down one, that's negative one, and left one, two, three, four, that's negative four, and negative one over negative four simplifies to one fourth. So just to confirm that it does not matter which way you go, there's more than one right way, you will still get the same answer. All right, so on the next one, uh, I'm going to leave this zoomed in here because we're going to do the same thing. We got to pick our points. Now, I said to, if you can to try to pick a point on the y-axis, if I look at the y-axis here, I can see that line isn't really going through the crosshairs there. So that's not a good point. I'm not going to pick it. So I want to find another point. This one at negative 1, 2 looks to be really in the corner. And then I'm just going to go down my line. And then it looks like at 4, negative 2, that that would be a good point as well. So my rise, I actually am going down 1, 2, 3, 4. So since I went down, it's negative 4. And to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's positive 5 since I'm going to the right. So that's negative 4 over positive 5. All right, my table here. Okay, recall, we want the change in y over the change in x. So I'm going to look at my y first, since I've already said it's a very common mistake to do change in x because it comes first, but we're going to do change in y. So from 9 to 13, I have to add 4. 13 plus 4 is 17, plus 4 is 21. So my change in y is positive 4, and my change in x, negative 3 plus 3 is 0, plus 3 is 3, plus 3 is 6. So my change in x is positive 3. So my slope is 4 over 3. And even though we want our slope to be simplified, we will leave slope as an improper but still simplified improper fraction. So 4 thirds would be the correct answer. Okay, next problem, another table. Okay, same thing. I encourage you to write change in y over change in x every time so that you remember to look at y first. So from 15 to 10, I have to subtract 5. Minus 5 is 5, minus 5 is 0. So I have a consistent or constant rate of change. My change in y is negative 5. And my change in x, I'm going up 1, up 1, up 1. So I've got positive 1. And so negative 5 over 1 is 
negative 5. Again, simplify your slope. All right, a line that passes through 0, 2, and 2, 12. Again, I'm going to label x1, y1, and x2, y2. My x1 didn't show up very well. So I'm still going to do change in y over change in x, or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 is 12 minus 2, and x2 is 2 minus 0. So 12 minus 2 is 10. 2 minus 0 is 2. 10 over 2 is our answer, but that's not simplified, so take it one more step, and 10 over 2 simplifies to 5. I want to show you one more time, but it does not matter. If I did y1 minus y2, or if I labeled them the opposite way, I would get 2 minus 12, and then 0 minus 2. 2 minus 12 is negative 10 over negative 2, which still simplifies, since a negative divided by a negative is a positive, it still simplifies to 5. And just to liken it to what we did on that graph, uh, let me go up to this one because this is a good way to show it. So basically, what we just did algebraically is the same thing we did up here when we went up 1 and over 4. Positive 1, positive 4 is the same thing as negative 1, negative 4, or from here, negative 1, negative 4. That's why both methods work. Because as long as you're consistent, the rate of change is the same whether you're going from this point up to this point or if you're going from here to here. It's the same rate of change because they fall on the same line.